Ever wondered how your TV can light up with moving pictures from across the globe? Or how a simple radio can pull music and voices out of thin air? T Today on Knowledge Hub, we're diving deep into how televisions and radios work and how signals travel from massive broadcast towers to the devices in your home. It all begins at the broadcast station. Microphones and cameras capture sound and images, which are converted into electrical signals. These signals can't travel far on their own, so they're encoded or modulated onto carrier waves. Radios use AM, amplitude modulation, where the wave's height changes with the sound, or FM, frequency modulation, where the spacing between waves changes instead. Television, especially in the early days, used similar modulation methods, but with far more information. Each frame of video was broken into lines, turned into an electrical signal, and combined with sound before being broadcast. But how can these signals cover an entire city, country, or even beyond? For local coverage, broadcasters rely on tall towers placed strategically so waves can travel line of sight over large areas. To cover entire nations, networks of relay towers repeat and amplify the signal, ensuring that mountains or distance don't block reception. FM and TV signals typically use the VHF or UHF bands, which can travel long distances but may still need repeaters in remote regions. Satellite technology took this even further. Broadcasters beam signals to orbiting satellites, which then retransmit them back down to dishes on rooftops, covering entire continents with a single beam. This is how global networks like CNN or BBC World News can be received almost anywhere on Earth. At your home, a receiving antenna, sometimes a simple telescopic rod on a radio or a rooftop antenna for older TVs, catches those waves. The receiver's tuner selects one frequency while filtering out others, which is why turning the dial or pressing a channel button lets you tune in to different stations. Each channel is essentially a different slice of the frequency spectrum. The signal is then demodulated, stripping the audio or video information off the carrier wave. For radios, that electrical signal drives a speaker, turning it into sound. For televisions, early sets used cathode ray tubes that scanned electron beams across a screen coated with phosphorescent material, line by line, to reconstruct the image. Color TV added separate signals for red, green, and blue, blending them to produce full-color pictures. Modern systems push this further. Cable television replaced antennas with coaxial or fiber optic cables, sending signals directly to your home with almost no interference. Digital TV compresses audio and video into data streams, packing dozens of high-definition channels into the space that once carried just one analog signal. And now, with streaming devices like smart TVs, Fire Sticks, or Chromecasts, the Internet itself has become the broadcaster, letting you watch not just national channels, but global content from Netflix, YouTube, or live IPTV providers. So, instead of tuning to a frequency, you're receiving data packets over Wi-Fi, which your device decodes into sound and video instantly. Radio has evolved too, from classic AM and FM to digital formats like DAB, and now internet radio where you can listen to stations worldwide with a tap on your phone. Yet the principle hasn't changed. Electromagnetic waves carry information, receivers tune in, and circuits turn those signals into the sound and pictures we experience every day. So the next time you flip through channels, adjust the radio dial, or stream a show from halfway across the world, remember the extraordinary chain of technology from broadcasters to antennas, satellites, cables, and beyond that makes it possible. If you have enjoyed learning how everyday tech hides incredible engineering, make sure to subscribe to Knowledge Hub for more deep dives. And as always, stay curious.